to wake up in the morning and to ponder over the word of the Lord and may the Lord be a blessing to all of us this morning in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, let us again uh, take our Bibles and read from the book of Mark chapter 4 verses 35 uh, onwards. Uh, on the day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And the other boats were with him. And a great storm, and a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stand asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked, and rebuked the winds and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the, way, and the sea obey him? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, and let it be so until he comes. Today, our focus is verse 38. But he was in the stand asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Um, yesterday, we were talking about the boat filling up and how that becomes a boat of confidence that is coming through from God because he will not give you more than you can handle. Therefore, each time you face difficulties and you face serious situations, you should look at it also in a way that says that heaven knew that I'll be able to handle this thing. Therefore, I need to prep myself up, get myself ready because heaven has put a vote of confidence on me. God saw it and he knew that I could handle it. And because of that, he passed it on to me. And therefore, because of the great strength I received from the Lord, I'll be able to take it through. But this morning, we're dealing with a different issue that is noted by Mark in the sense that the disciples had tried everything that they could. They tried to be strong. They tried to show character. They tried to do what they were supposed to do, but the boat was filling up continuously and they felt threatened and they felt afraid and they felt as though this is the time to wake up the one that is not with them at that point. And you must know that they go to the stand where Jesus is noted to have been sleeping. And they wake him up saying, Master, do you not care that we are perishing? Oh, very, very heartfelt words that were coming through from the disciples when they can see that death is close to them, when they can see that drowning is inevitable. But at the same time, the one that they want to see moving around giving them directions, is not around and he's asleep in the stern of the sheep. But I want you to note one thing. Mark is saying there was a great storm. It wasn't a small storm. It was a great storm. There, were, there was great wind. There was lightning. There were waves that were rocking and knocking on the boat. There were making the boat to be unstable. And throughout all of this commotion, Jesus is asleep in the stand of the ship. No amount of noise, no amount of panic, no amount of uh, running around by the disciples, trying everything that they could, could make Jesus to wake up from the stand. But when they call out to him saying, Jesus, Careth not that we perish, even though the storm was making noise, even though the winds were making noise, even though there was lightning and there was all sorts of commotion, yet Jesus hears their voice and he awakens. My brothers and sisters this morning, I'd like us to 
take a pause on what Mark is noticing here. Mark is saying that nothing could awaken Jesus. Nothing could disturb the sleep of Jesus, but the voice of the disciples that were coming through saying, Master, care us not that we perish. And I'd like to say this morning, yes, God is able to hear our voices. He's able to hear us even though we are so faint and we cannot be heard, even though we cannot be heard by uh, the government of the day, because lots of people are complaining that the politicians don't want to listen to us. But at the end of the day, we have one that is our captain that is able to hear on a different frequency when it comes to his children that are running or are entering into a position of helplessness. I'm saying to you this morning that the waves could not wake him, that the thunder could not wake him, that the winds could not wake him, but the voice of the saints, the voice of the righteous crying out to God, saying, God, care us not that we perish. That managed to wake up Jesus. I'm saying that he really is our shepherd. He knows us. He knows our voice. I know one author says that um, our hairs are numbered, meaning that if one hair falls off, heaven knows about it. And I'd like to say that heaven really cares about us. They care about our infirmities. He cares about everything that happens in our lives. And every time we turn ourselves and we turn ourselves to Jesus, Jesus is always open to hear our prayers and to answer towards our call. He was asleep in the stern of the sheep. And the disciples come to wake him and they say, Master, care us not that we perish. And I'd like to note that Mark is not saying that when they called out to him, they called out to him as the master. But he says that they use the word didastolos, which means teacher, meaning that the disciples in their experience of Jesus only knew him as the one that could teach them, that could teach them what to do, that could teach them how to do it, that could teach them on the parables and what is their meaning. They had not had an experience of Jesus as a savior, as one that is able to rescue them from the impending danger of death that they were faced with. And I'd like to say today, even though the reference to God was not the reference over what they needed, which was a savior, yet even in the wrong address to God as a teacher, he still knows exactly what it is that they need. And I'd like to speak to somebody today that says that my problem, Pastor, is that I do not know how to pray. I cannot articulate in front of God that which it is that I need to say when I talk to him. And I'd like to say today, it is not important what you say to him. It is not important how you address him. All you need to do is to cry out with an earnest heart that says Jesus. And I remember one author says that it is not in our utterings that God is able to hear what we're saying, but God can hear us even when we do not utter a single word. All he says that tears are a language that God understands when your heart is broken, when you cannot even utter the words, when you like the woman of name that was leading the funeral procession of his only son, and she was also a widow. Nothing is recorded in the Bible about Jesus having heard a prayer, but because of her brokenness, because of her tears, because she did not know what to do, because of her position of helplessness, Jesus responded, I say today, it is not your articulation. Heaven can hear you. Heaven can respond. Even though you have not uttered a word, what is important is that your heart is directed to the direction of the one that is able to rescue you from your different troubles. This morning, I'd like to say to somebody, maybe you do not know what to say in your prayer. It is not important how you say it. What is very important is that you have turned to Jesus. The disciples came and they made uh, this 
reference of calling him teacher, not because they were trying to say that you are unable to save us, but they did not have that experience. Sometimes I watch the ladies in church and I can hear the references that they give to Jesus. And I think to myself, oh, I wish I could have that experience so that I am able to call Jesus by those names that they use them. And I like to say that when we come to prayer, it is not the time for copycats, but it is a time for outpouring of the heart. It doesn't matter how you come to him. Come to him the way that you best know how to get to him. And God will hear you. We need no intermediaries. We need nobody that is knowledgeable. We need no uh, uh, no one to send us uh, and, 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 and be a medium for us to get to Jesus. All we need is an earnest heart that longs for him. And Jesus will respond towards us and he will come to our rescue. Immediately, when they've come to him and they say that Jesus cares not that we are perishing, um, they, 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 they lack the articulation. And uh, even though they were lacking the articulation, yet Jesus could hear them. But I'd like you to note the fact that uh, this situation that was happening with the disciples, it was not a brand new situation. Even with Mary and Martha, when their brother had died and they, Jesus had not responded and had not come through to him, when he gets to them and he says, show me where you have laid him. They say, oh, master, it's been quite a while. I'm sure by now it will not be good for us to go and open up the grave. And the reason for that is because they knew Jesus as the one that loved Lazarus, but they didn't know him as the one that could resurrect Lazarus. And I'm saying to you, that did not stop Jesus from doing what he was supposed to do. And what I like about this is that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit groans for us and it prays on our behalf so that it can correct the prayers where we do not know or we cannot articulate what it is that we need from God. And I'd like to say that I'm thankful this morning that we have a God that can read hearts, that we have a God that can relate to our experiences, that we have a God that doesn't go by what we say, but goes by what we need. And because of that, I know that had God only listened to the things we were saying, oh, it would have been terrible for us because many of us don't even know what we need. Some of us are crying out, saying, God, I need a car. And we do not know that heaven is watching us and saying, if I give this one a car, it would be the last time they take a walk and they will have high blood pressure, which will consume them. Therefore, the reason why the car is not coming, it's because the Holy Spirit is not communicating a car. The Holy Spirit is saying, God, I need help and I need to be healthy so I can look after my positions. And I'd like to say, you will say God is not answering. No, God is answering, but he is answering as one that is all knowledgeable, that knows exactly what it is that we need. We need to come through, even though we lack articulation, but God will surely understand what our heart desires. And he was asleep in the stern of the ship. All this part, it makes me feel as though God probably did not care about their situation. That is why Jesus was asleep, because he did not care about their situation. But something about the fact that Jesus was sleeping makes me to be uneasy, because Jesus was in a total state of relaxation, even though everyone else was running around panicking and in crisis mode, yet Jesus was in a total state of relaxation. He was lying down on a pillow whilst the storm was raging. And I'd like to say maybe there was a reason for Jesus to sleep because Jesus is the alpha and the omega. Nothing takes him by surprise. He doesn't go to the position of Alpha, which is the beginning, and then run again to the position of Omega, which is the end. 
but simultaneously Jesus is standing upon the beginning and the end and he looks at life in continuum therefore there's no situation there's nothing that happens in our lives that takes God by surprise because he's still in the beginning yet he moves until the end therefore God can see our lives in a continuation and he's not taken by surprise and because of that most of the time we make our crisis a crisis to God yet God does not go on crisis mode because as the Alpha and Omega, he knows exactly what is going on. The reason Jesus was sleeping, the reason Jesus was on a cushion, the reason Jesus was not taken aback is because he had it all sorted out already. They thought they were dying, but hey, they were not dying because Jesus had taken care of it. My brothers and sisters this morning, I say to you, yes, you may be in a crisis mode because you are seeing the manifestation of your problem, but God has seen it when it was a way off and he knew exactly what you're going to need. And by the time you panic, God is not in a panic. He's lying down on a pillow saying that everything is going to be all right. Brothers and sisters, the reason why Jesus did not panic coming through to Mary and Martha. It's because he knew that even though Lazarus was going to sleep the sleep of death, yet after four days, he has the power to waken him up. He has the power of resurrection. The fact that they had not experienced it doesn't mean God was unable to do it. And I'd like to say even in your situation, oh, you might be in crisis mode, but don't make your crisis God's crisis because God is not in a panic. He knew your situation away far off. And by the time you are busy panicking, God is already relaxed because he has brought a solution for your problem. Whilst we were still sinners, he had already come to die. God did not wait for us to need a savior. But when we knew we needed a savior, heaven was already relaxing, sleeping on a cushion because Jesus had already been sent on the cross for our supplication. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to say this morning, yes, your situation might be terrible, but don't stop blaming God for not caring. The reason God is quiet it's because it's got it sorted out. I can imagine Jesus being woken up by the disciples and thinking, what is the state of panic? I got this. I got this. God is saying to me this morning, to that person that is in crisis mode, yes, it's okay for you to be in crisis, but don't push me into crisis mode as well, because I got this. I got your situation. It hasn't taken me by surprise. I knew about it away long off. Brothers and sisters, time is not with us. I'd like to get to a part where it says that Jesus was asleep in the stern of the sheep. And I'd like to say that most people say that the most important part of the sheep is the helm, because that is the wheel of the sheep. That is where you direct the sheep. But when I was looking at the positioning of the stern, oh, I could not help but be excited because the helm is at the top of the stern, meaning that where Jesus was sleeping, whoever was the captain that was wheeling the sheep, he was standing upon the place where Jesus was sleeping. And I'd like to say to you this morning, as you will, as you navigate your life, and as you direct it, go, can you choose to stand upon the one that is the solid rock, even though he's asleep in the stand that is used for storing things, yet the existence of the cushion shows that this was a place where the captain would go so that he can retire and sleep. And I'd like to say that Jesus positions himself as the real captain of the sheep. The reason he's sleeping in the stand, it's because that is where the master navigator is supposed to sleep. The one that is on top is simply the one that wields the life, but he gets the instructions from the one that is in the stand. And I'd like to say this morning, yes, 
choose Jesus, the solid rock upon which you can stand so that as you navigate yourself in this life that is terrible, you may know that you have a master rock, one that is solid enough for you to stand upon even in the times of sorrow so that you can be well directed into a good time. Brothers and sisters, I wish we had more time, but time is against us. But the reason for these short snippets of uh, 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 the word are meant so that we can be led towards him and consider him as the one we need to turn our hearts to so that he's able to rescue us. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he's there to rescue them from it all. I'd like to say that God is positioned in the right place. He's positioned in the right place. The reason why he is sleeping, he's in total relaxation because he has your life planned out. Don't go into panic and don't make your crisis God's crisis because heaven has already sorted out your sheep. Are you standing upon a firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ himself? That is what we need to direct this morning in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for being available just as we need you. Just when we start to go on panic mode, you have already done it, Lord. Father, we urge you, go back to sleep. We are so sorry for waking you and making our crisis a crisis for us. Because, Lord, it is our lack of understanding about who you are. We know you are God. We know nothing takes you by surprise. We know, Father, that even though we just seeing this thing now, but it was available for you to ponder over a long time ago. This is our time, Father, when we give all worship and glory and honor unto your name. Because we know, Father, that where you are is not where we are. Your ways are not our ways. And because of that, excuse us for lessening you and making making you to seem like man that needs to panic because we know that where you are, you can take a restful sleep and not be in panic because you know you've sorted it out. Thank you for the work you did on Calvary because we never even knew that we will need a savior one day. But now when we cry out, you've already done the action that is going to be for our salvation. Right on, King Jesus, right on in our lives and rescue, Lord, every situation. Teach us and give us the patience so that we can wait upon you, so that we can mount up with wings, Lord, and know that God has already taken care of everything. This is our prayer in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 We thank God.